Hi there. I'm going to present this paper, Sustaining the Note Towards Building Solidarities with Young People in a Time of Crisis. So the overarching question that we're looking at today is in times of increasing complexity and crisis, how might we work alongside young people to sustain activist efforts and facilitate healing? So the two things that we're going to do today is explore how we pivoted our research with young people as, as a result of the events of 2020 and to trace young people's voices and action across this time, drawing on two different projects. So the research today is presented presented today is based on two different studies that spanned across late 2019 and 2020. The first one aimed to map young people's social justice um, concerns and their experiences of voice and action. And that was the first phase. The second phase was going to implement an action-oriented program with an overseas partner. But of course, that didn't end up happening. So data from the first phase included surveys which were conducted just before the pandemic. And this data provides us with a picture of young people's concerns before the pandemic hit and also captures key insights into their social justice orientations and beliefs about change. The average age of young people taking that survey was 20 years old. 92% of them were studying full time and the vast majority were working part time or casually. And almost half had a parent or both parents born overseas. So by April this year, we shifted the individual um, and group interviews online. And these data gave in-depth insights into how young people were experiencing lockdowns, isolation, and the economic fallout that saw them lose um, their jobs. But as we will outline in the coming slides, the cascade of the crises occurred over this past year set us on a different path. Frustrated by the lack of action in the first project, we used the data to inform and develop a youth participatory action research project that could take place exclusively online with young people aged 25 to 15, oh, sorry, 16 to 25 across Victoria. This project aimed to mobilize young people's critical and creative skills to explore research questions that they develop themselves. Um, it used a youth participatory action research approach, which is grounded in democratic knowledge production, um, and it involved adults and young people coming together um, to explore these important issues and create change. Young people of this generation have grown accustomed to navigating complexity and crisis and precarity. Consider the slow violence of the neoliberal era and what that's done to young people. Underemployment, the rise of fascism globally and the ongoing environmental degradation that we've seen. These, in addition to these dramatic um, other social change movements that we've seen um, have, have been a key part of their, you know, their lives. And so movements like, you know, the marriage inequality, um, Black Lives Matter and the Me Too movement have really shaped the way that they see the world. When young people in our survey rated the top three concerns that they have for the country, the community and for young people in general, we could see that mental health was by far the most important. And just a note here. These are percentages of responses, and we've only included the top four issues across each um, aspect. So it's not to say that unemployment, for example, isn't an issue in young people's communities, but it wasn't one of the top four. So whilst mental health and drug and alcohol use could be considered a symptom of some broader social inequality um, and issues, such as those related to in the environment, racism, discrimination, or underemployment, um, we can see that there are significant challenges that um, young people will have to face. And 87% of them believe that individuals were not to blame for the challenges um, that they had currently, and that 75% of them believe that significant disadvantage and social inequality um, was present in Australia. 
So the climate justice movement has brought a particular um, amount of uh, a particular um, increase in in certainty. Um, the, the certainty of the future essentially is in in, in question, um, and it's been the focus of young people's energies um, to voice their concerns over the past few years. In 2019, 2020, we saw that Australia was ravaged by bushfires, known as the Black Summer, and it saw climate concerns become a real reality. Young people had already been doing um, this fight globally and it was a, a really big issue in Australia for young people. So it was only earlier in 2019 that thousands of young school children um, walked out and protested the Australian government's lack of action and urgency in addressing climate change. Young people felt as though they were not being listened to by politicians um, when the Prime Minister said, what we want is more learning in schools and less activism. So as we sat in January this year, watching Australia burn, young people looked around for leadership, words of hope and acknowledgement that their fears about climate change were real and justified, but these never came. The irony of this statement by a lead politician telling young people not to exercise a democratic right um, and, and organize is not lost. This sentiment is so clearly reflected in some of the survey data and the interviews um, that we conducted. So we had 76% of young people believing that politicians just don't value their voices. And young people in the interviews said things like, in Australia, we don't value the voices of young people. We see them as you know, not being able to understand the situation or have anything good to say. I don't think the majority of young people are going to be able to expect things that were just given to other generations. The world's changing now in so many ways, young people can't keep up in terms of looking after basic needs. When young people's threat, hope is threatened, well-being is compromised, and so are conditions for social change and a just society. This is drawing on the work of Jinrite and Prilitensky. If, as Jinrite tells us, healing is political and not clinical, then we must work towards building spaces for hope um, with and alongside young people. So I heard someone refer to activism in a way like a choir trying to sustain a note that's too long for one person to hold. Someone will hold, someone will have to drop out to breathe, but others will be carrying the note and they'll come back in and let someone else drop out. It doesn't sound like there's gaps in it. It sounds like there's one unbroken note. With the onset of COVID-19 and the dramatic impacts on young people, we found ourselves at a turning point and a taking stock moment as researchers. In quiet moments and private spaces, we sat with the voices of young people in our minds. In thinking about this quote by Taylor, we thought there's a crucial question here around how we work with them in a time like this. We could see from the data that young people were cha facing challenges and struggling with what they called an existential crisis in conditions that had already become really challenging throughout the pandemic. So we thought, how might we work alongside them to sustain these efforts? We felt the need to do the work of healing, resisting and conspiring to change the current system. We set out to begin a participatory action research um, project that used arts to work alongside young people and have the potential to open up these crucial spaces in which they can make sense of their everyday lives, which were changing very rapidly, um, share the collective grievances that they had, the individual pains and some of the aspirations. This is what we imagined where possibilities for healing were political. We worked alongside a youth-led social enterprise to co-design and deliver seven workshops and over a do dozen individual and group support sessions over the life of the project so far. We considered this model as both flexible and emergent, building in activities and establishing strong relationships with young people so we could be as responsive as possible because we know that life during the pandemic was both chaotic, well, is both chaotic and unpredictable. 
So some of the young people um, in the collective uh, did both social change and creative work. And so they, some of the, the creative mediums that they used to explore the topics that they chose were poetry, song, film, sound, graphic design, sculpture, drawing, photography, surveys, podcast blogs, and video diaries. Early on in the project, we mapped some of the key issues that young people were facing or felt like they were facing at that moment for their families and for their communities mental health, financial strain, and job loss, and recognizing privilege were some of those that were resonating the most with the group. And the, the fires here indicate, um, you know, which social issues resonated with young people. So some of the key um, research questions uh, that were um, developed through the topics that young people were identifying and some of these are taken directly from them can fit into these four broad areas. Um, so how do and did we stay connected, grounded, strong and cultivate hope? How do we develop a sense of identity, individual and collective and strength and belonging in a distressing time? How do or did we uplift communities and unheard voices and how do we ensure that young people have a seat at the table moving forward particularly? How do we document um, the various impacts of COVID and the Black Lives Matter movement and climate change and these, this cascade of crisis, crises for young people in vulnerable communities? And how do we use this as an opportunity to create a better future, mobilize and fight injustice and protect future generations? And how do we sustain ourselves in these efforts? So there's a lot of focus on how young people maintain their well-being when they're doing social justice work. And here are some of just a few of the, um, the quotes from poems or from conversations that young people um, said. So there are simplistic everyday narratives of joy and pain, which prevent people from seeing the complexity of life and creatively finding ways to experience different emotional possibilities. Another young woman said, sometimes I feel alone, even when I'm surrounded by people I love. Relationships fade and shrivel into promises and secrets. Playgrounds are cemeteries of childhood. The phone stops ringing. They don't love you anymore. So a lot of young people were talking about this period of time in their life as one of transition from high school to university, um, into work, and still figuring out who they are, their voice, what they stand for. And um, for a lot of young people, particularly from rural areas, they had to um, leave the city where they were attending university and go back home. Um, and so all of this disruption and social isolation really played on people's sense of who they were and the kinds of supports that they had. And so these were some of the things that were um, coming up in the workshops. And here's just um, a collage of some of the creative projects and they're still a work in process. So they're just finalizing them now. And some of them have been films um, looking at mental health and toxic positivity on social media. Some of them are paste ups, drawings and sculptures on domestic violence, which is we've seen a, a, a dramatic increase um, during isolation and lockdowns. Um, a YouTube channel exploring how creatives were surviving lockdown and a short film exploring the struggles of identity um, and gangs. These were just some of the creative work that young people have, begin, have begun to craft for their social change campaigns. We're excited to see these projects um, and the collective grow in the coming months. And those who have been involved um, have identified some of the visions that they have for social change and the um, that they hope to create and also what the future should look like. So these were across these four areas. Um, raising awareness and isolation around health, mental health, particularly um, young men's mental health, um, that everybody is seen and heard in telling stories about this time, um, particularly vulnerable communities, and that there's a unified energy among people, and that safety um, in the future is something that is secured, so, th so around family violence, but also psychological harms, economic security, um, and just a sense of safety around um, the environment and that there will be one, um, a future for them. 
um, and then building communities for healing and activism. So we did, um, obviously, I'm sure like a lot of people notice that, that the social, um, that physical distancing really did result in social isolation and people were really keen to, to connect and rebuild in, um, in new ways and to do the work of healing um, from the collective trauma of, of the pandemic. Um, so whilst we haven't really had enough time to begin analysis or reflect more deeply about this project, we can say that doing action research during a pandemic has required us to carefully negotiate our roles as scholar activists to foster situated solidarities with young people. As academics in positions of relative power, we always take stock of what we might be able to bring um, to social change efforts with communities. But this is really tough when you're facing significant challenges and experiencing collective traumas, um, including you know, the researchers. So some of the key challenges that we found during, during um, this project was, of course, navigating online modes of engagement and trying to foster a genuine sense of community when we're all isolated. Now, it's been a tremendous learning curve and we found that building relationships with participants took a lot longer than it does in person. Um, and trying to connect them with each other and build collaborations across the projects and change efforts um, took much more concentrated effort um, and than if I think we were meeting up in person. Navigating university processes has also been a significant challenge with WIPAR being um, outside of the traditional boundaries, the boundaries of traditional research, um, the fundamental values and commitments to participants can be jeopardized because of the bureaucracies. Um, just in terms of being able to do things in a timely manner, purchase things for young people, all of these sorts of things, um, they get stuck in, in the bureaucracy and, and really do um, make it difficult to keep um, the project flowing. Um, just in conclusion, we'd really like to thank the young people who participated in this project um, and hopefully it's something that we'll have a lot more to report on in the coming years um, because this really is uh, like a crucial time to do this kind of research. Thank you so much for listening. <laughs>